This is your weekend market recap for Friday, July 8th, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your weekend market recap for Friday, July 8th, 2022. Hope you had a great week. I know we did. Absolutely fantastic week. Now, I know a lot of people out in Twitter world and FinTwit have been struggling, and one of the things that I like to really remind people is usually there's one or two things that you are doing wrong that are continued repeating mistakes that lead to problems, and a lot of it is not being able to sift through the noise and following the masses which usually leads to problems again trading is a game it's a casino game the goal of the game is to take the most amount of money from the most amount of people again are you following the herd are you doing the things that make money or not because if you were short and extremely bearish this week and did not see how extremely bullish we were based on a whole host of things which we'll get into the video then you clearly are not seeing the market for what it is. You're seeing it for what you want it to be, or you're doing something actually wrong. And this is the topic we're talking about in the Discord right now. You are following the news. You are looking for the news, for confirmation. You are looking for anything other than yourself to know what's going on. Again, I always drop this in the Discord room, and people are like, you know, what, how, why is the market so simple to you? Hit pause. I mean, it literally is eight quick rules. And people don't realize it's, you know, the, the specialists are harvesters of inventory at what you consider cheap wholesale prices to sell later at retail prices. That's why people buy high and sell low. They get shaken out. They don't understand what's going on. Please read these rules. Stop by the Discord room. Link is in the description below. If you have any questions and you're really struggling, again, reach out. But just be aware that, you know, this room, what we have going on here is meant for everybody. So if you have greater needs, stop by the side rooms, direct message me. I don't mind trying to help you out. So on that note, again, I hope you had a great week. And if you're struggling, I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of people don't layer in. They don't layer out. They don't. They do a lot of things that makes it more like gambling. And I always like to use this blackjack analogy, and people can really relate. Obviously, the house has a statistical edge, right? Trading. Again, 90% of traders fail. Well, why? The statistical edge is to the market. If you don't vary your bets and you always increase your bets as you're winning, you're going to lose. It's like blackjack. The key is to vary your bets, know the card count, and vary your bets. Because again, if you win $10, $20, $30, and you keep pressing your bet in blackjack, all it takes is one loss to get right back to where you started. The goal of how to trade correctly, it's like a business, is to vary your bets based on probabilities and that's why we're probability based traders we don't believe in certainty we always trust our stops we use the markets as a tool to extract money again but we don't marry theses we don't assume we're always right a lot of people can't do that because the brain isn't wired that way the brain really loves certainty it loves to know it's going to be right and it knows when it gets into something it can't be wrong because that's what worked in our survival right like this underlying belief that we can't lose and if we work hard we do great no trading doesn't work like that it actually goes against everything psychologically we know, hence why it is so difficult, and it turns into gambling. Bitcoin said how to hold these zones. It has. Bouncing higher. Congratulations. Set your stops now. Probably around 19,000. If it breaks out, cool. If not, we've talked about it. There's two scenarios that are playing out. The chop to fail or the chop to rip. We don't know. So if you have a winning trade here, you set your stops because you can always get back in so that you A, don't lose money or B, have a small gain if it does pull back. If it doesn't pull back, you don't have to worry about that problem. But again, here we go. Probabilities. What now? What's the future? You don't know. You do know that there's clearly a bottom, right? We clearly know this is has to hold. So knowing that probability, what do you do, right? You set your stops. You're, you're not in a game of losing big. And holding losers now again if the market for bitcoin doesn't work out your goal is not to hold it forever because you can always trade it get back in like that's the hardest thing about trading is that this committed to mental guarantees that we don't want to be wrong i get i get that i'm wired the same way i had to overcome that like i have to be willing to admit that i am going to be wrong and let's be honest the market is very tricky unless you've been doing this like i have for a long period of time it's going to trap you and confuse you, and it's going to make you do a lot of dumb stuff. That's part of learning. 
Hey, who? All right, oil. What do we say? Got down to range lows. Not surprised it's bouncing. Ultimately, I still think this is going lower in time, probably somewhere in the 60s, 70s range. <laughs> Now, a lot of people don't understand demand destruction. They don't understand bear markets, recessions, whatever. Like the market doesn't go one direction. So as much as you want to believe oil is going to point A or point B in a straight line, you are absolutely 100% typically wrong. Again, it takes time. It takes chop. It just is what it is. Right now, you have a double top and a chop zone. Break below here, going lower. Holds here, bounces. Not surprised. And again, we'll talk about when we get into the USO and some of the oil names. Don't be surprised it bounce. Know your references, have stops. I do think oil is a short. Now people are going to like freak out and they're like, what, you're crazy? And it's like, no, I mean, in a recession, oil gets, oil is not immune. It's just absolutely not immune. All right, bonds. Tricky little week. Bought, if again, if you're in the Discord room, bought it down here in the low 112s today. Talked about the 20-day closing back above, you know, these lows. Thought 112.50. Perfect. Now again, now what do you notice? Pull back on lighter volume. Not surprised. Now, again, is this the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder? Well, again, remember, we bought down here in the 108s, 109s. We talked about this. If you check out the monthly, we talked about these ranges. This blue range down here would probably hold because you came from, again, when you move fast in one direction, support becomes very bouncy. By bouncy, meaning like it's going to hold. And now, here are thing, things like Bitcoin. You set your stops. If it goes lower, you're gone. But if you think this is a trade that's going to go higher, you can actually use the weakness to add. That's what I did today, setting my stops accordingly. I'll probably do somewhere around 110. If I get stopped out, I'll watch what happens if it gets in 108. It's really that simple. Keep in mind, the brain does not make it simple because as soon as this thing, the gun starts blazing and the market starts moving and everything's flying around, your brain is going to get caught up on details that probably don't matter when the reality is it, it really is simple. Have your plan, set your stops, and execute it. I mean, if you can literally do that, that's how easy trading is. But keep in mind, the brain doesn't think like that. It starts absorbing all the emotional data that's going on, and your emotions start clouding your judgment. I say this all the time. I can teach someone how to trade. Someone can teach me how to do their job. If I'm emotionally unstable, I, I retain none of it, and I'm going to make mistakes. I mean, imagine, like, it's like teaching a child, right? Children are terrible at learning at times because, again, they can't focus. They're very emotional. If they start making a mistake, they go crazy. We're all children at some fundamental level. Keep that in mind, like our psyches are. The dollar, again, been right on this, said bullishness, but what have I said recently? I said, people were like, oh, it's bearish, it's going lower. I'm like, uh, keep in mind, the dollar will die on a blow up, going up first. People think the dollar's gonna implode first. It's like, no, 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 no. The dollar's gonna probably go the opposite direction of what everyone thinks, because again, that's how a bull market ends. It blows out up. Think of like Tesla, like everybody thought it was going higher. Then it fails, like that's the blowout. Well, the dollar has actually got everybody trapped because everyone thinks it's going lower and it's going higher. So it's the same kind of effect. It's, it's going to make the, probably a parabolic rise before it blows out. That's not consensus, but look at the price action. It is obviously that's what's happening. It's really hard for people to wrap their brain around that stuff because everyone sees all this negative dollar bullish or dollar bearish activity. What is the price action doing? Again, are you reading the news? Are you getting zero hedge material all day and going dollar, dollar, crash, crash, crash? No. The actual logical thing is for it to blow up, then it blows down, <laughs> you know, rise significantly to wash out everybody who's short and who believes the dollar is going to fail. Then it goes lower. Now, again, what we said recently, don't be surprised. It's, it's not going to go up every day. Chop, chop, chop. I honestly think it probably could pull back near term because it is overbought. Again, overbought is subjective. But when you look at some of the volume action, it's tight up here. A lot of indecision. You don't know. Keep in mind, the channel is not that far from there. So if it does get up here, 28, 20, you know, high 28s, I would watch ripple that. Uh, the VIX, again, pat myself on the back. Told you folks, again, if you're watching these videos, you're, you're seeing how we anticipate the market. What did we say? End of quarter, end of month, pullbacks. Here you go. Here's one for April. Here's one for January. Uh, here's one in June. Don't be surprised when this pulls back to the trend line. And I've said this a bazillion times. I, I'm not telling you it's not a bear market. And that's what I think people don't wrap their heads around. What do we say? Compression before the spike. Compression before the spike. Compression, again, keep in mind, the VIX was not as affected as the Vixen, which wasn't existing then, but the volatility of the Qs was totally different than the volatility of the spiders, SPY. Keep in mind, the QQQ bubble 
totally different. But there wasn't a Vixen. There wasn't, you know, as a newer ETF. It wasn't considered what it is now. So compression, you see this higher lows, chop. That's what I think what's going on. And again, it's a bear market. Keep in mind, a bull market, you get you hold near the lows. Well, look what's going on. You're making higher highs, higher lows. Now you could technically say those aren't higher lows, but however, high and tight is good. I still predict you're gonna get a low 20, even a teen test on the VIX at some point. Why? Because again, everyone's bearish. That's the problem with the news and the half the psycho like the psychology of folks is like, I see the sentiment. Everybody's bearish and the market's rising. Where were you? Huh? What were you thinking? You were following the news, right? And we talked about this. Channel low, at support, doji, professional gap, rises, hits the 28, backs up, and we said, all right, it more looks like this than this coming down. Why? One, two, pop. One, two, pop. You see that? The higher low? We talked about this this week. It was like so obvious. Now, again, if you actually look at the divergence between stocks making new lows and new highs, they changed. There's not as many companies making new lows as there were. Now, new highs, is, I guess not relative, but just less new lows. Again, seasonality, bear market rallies. Again, a bear market's a trading market. It moves up fast and moves down slow. Keep that in mind. It's just like the opposite of a bull market, which moves up slow, pulls back quick. Now what? I've said this again. If you watch previous videos, I think we're getting up somewhere over 400. Now after that, I have no clue. It could rise to the channel highs, 434. could come back up here to support resistance at 416. Could get the 100-day. How do you know when to sell? Well, here we go. The less you let you own less, the more you're up. That's what I keep trying to tell people. Like deleverage the more you're up because you don't know when it's going to pull back. And then like today, we literally have murdered every pullback today by Adam because we know we think it's going higher. It seems very obvious. We are building pressure to rip because everybody is short and bearish. Think about it. Think about how we predicted oil peak. Everybody was bullish at the highs. Who was a bullish? Retail. Who is bearish? Retail. Who loses 90% of the time? Who are the market makers targeting? You, me, retail. We, you have to be very cognizant of this kind of stuff. And look what's happened. We've bounced. And not confident we're going to bounce higher. It doesn't mean we can't chop there. Because again, I don't mind chop. I, I prefer, this is nice, that straight line. I prefer the, I guess, like the choppier action. We really haven't seen it. And again, we might not. And it might be just a quick short line. And again, this is why I keep telling people. Like once we make our milk on longing, we're just going to watch. Because it probably has to chop out. Like, don't forget that. Like, once you start closing out your, your longs fully, don't go right in shorting. It's going to probably take time. We'll see. Again, the people, everyone just assumes straight line moves, V bottoms, V tops. And it's like, nah, you get this choppy, sloppy action. Anyway, QQQ, again, this is why we're the most bullish tech is because you have the CHIPS Act, you have lower rates potentially, you have inflation turning into deflation, which tech loves. I've said this a bazillion times when we got down to channel lows. You better watch out. And then when we built compressed here, three-day range, we talked about it. As long as you could hold, you're going higher. Now you hit the 50-day, you hit up near 300, not surprised. Where do you think this is going? Minimum 315. Could it go to channel highs, 100-day? I don't know. We'll know when we get there. And again, if you sell out earlier and you take big fat profits and your quarter is made, do you really feel like you got to trade a ton? Again, the hardest part is buying down here and, and trading around it. We talk about that all the time. The bottoms are the hard part. Once you nail them and you get the movement in your favor, it's pretty much easy as it can be with logic, probabilities, and layering in and out, not going all in every day and just hoping the market goes higher or holding all in all day. Because again, I mean, I have a core position. We talk about this. You have your core position. You have your trading position. You can do both. Core position should be held through the swing. The trading position should be traded accordingly based on how fast things move. Again, more you're up, less you own. That's trading. Same thing with blackjack. You make a ton of money at the table. Pull some, put it in your pocket. Because you could lose the next hand. Like, don't assume you're always going to win. I've been doing this a long time. I know my probabilities of winning are somewhere in the 80 percentage range, which is great. I guarantee that's better than everybody you know. But again, it's the 15, 20% times when I am wrong that I have to be very mentally aware that I can lose and I need a D-lever, not... I don't need to keep pressing my bets. I'm making money left and right. I don't keep building my bets. Because the higher we go, the more likely what? Pulls back. IWM talked about hitting channel low. Talked about it hitting 
the 2018 and 2020 highs and bouncing. It didn't really get exactly to the channel, but again, close enough for government work. Let's talk about gold. Again, I don't want to waste a ton of time on this because I keep telling people this is purgatory for gold. And if you don't understand that, it means you need to go check out the monthly. And I'm telling you, the best times to buy gold as of this point going forward is if it's a bear market, is waiting for the whoosh and wa like washout. You saw a little one during COVID and then it spiked. We are not there yet. Look at the volumes. Again, the action to me, I, I like these levels. There's a reason why I have them drawn. They were support in the past. It should hold here. I just don't believe it's the washout. I think the washout will come later in the year when the bear market accelerates. You don't own gold as a hedge because, again, it's not a hedge for wipeouts. Like when the market liquidates, everything gets thrown out. You ever heard the saying, throw the baby out with the bathwater? That's what happens. Good stuff gets sold too. And gold won't be immune because if margin calls come, people have to liquidate. They'll liquidate whatever they think is good to pay off what's bad. And that's a, the problem. Silver, the same thing. Now, here's where, I mean, the silver folks to me are the, I wouldn't call them the dumbest traders out there, but they are. Because again, silver is just a purgatory. And, I've been, and trust me, the only reason why I can call them idiots is because I have been the idiot who thinks, hold on, hold tight, hold tight. No, trade it, buy physical at cheap prices. That's the only solution. Here you go, 2008, spring. Here you go, COVID, slam, ram, jam. Now where? I don't know where the low is. I don't see a capitulation. I don't want to be early to silver and gold because there are going to be other trading opportunities that will move bigger and further in either direction that are worth trading. Again, GDX, it's a no man's land trade. It should bounce. I say this recently, it should. I don't guarantee again, because the best thing is zinc, boom. Here you go. Shoot, boom. 2015 with some uh, China stuff, Shoot, boom. Again, at this point, please respect the game. Respect gold, silver. It is a manipulated game. Do not sit here and tell yourself, well, the manipulation's real, but I'm going to ignore it. No, that's, that's dumb. I know this stuff is manipulated, so why am I going to try to fight it and act like Again, you're pretending like this is a meme stock and you're somehow going to move the market. You and I and all of us who believe in this don't aren't moving the market, clearly. GXJ, same thing. Here you go. COVID. We're not there yet. I don't know how low this stuff can go. I, AG, I, we told you to get in, get out last fall. Here you go. Actually, I mean, you played it multiple times. Spring and ran up to here. Said, so get out. Now you're at lows. I don't know how low it's going to go. AEM. I, I mean... I would say AG, probably four to six rain, AEM, 35, 30, NFGC. I like it down here, but I think it could go down to $3. I mean, again, I I don't want to waste a ton of time. I'm just telling you not to buy them. If you're like, oh, they're going to rally 10 or 20% maybe. Who knows? Again, I have no clue, but I don't think they're going to rally like this. This is the problem. You're looking for this when the reality is it might be this and then <laughs> lower later. Uh, I just think there's better opportunities. Again, you only have so much money and bullets to fire into the market, so choose them wisely. If you're buying stuff that's stuck, you're going to be really annoyed. Again, I mean, look at the miners compared to the NASDAQ and the SMH and all the other stuff that we're, we're really pushing. Going nowhere, SMH. Look at this. Zing. 189, 206. If you're playing or 210 almost today, if you're playing the Soxel, 10 to 13, 14 dollars, that's 40 percent in three, four days. Again, pass stuck purgatory. That's what I keep saying. Purgatory, like leave the stuff alone. All right, letter X. I moved out of materials because again, I'm still worried about fundamentals that don't matter, but they do matter to perception. Because if China unloads steel, copper, all stuff, and a lot of people are saying they're not going to do it, but this is freaking Uncle Joe Biden. He'll sell out America for a payday. We all know that. Again, that's not political. That's just what it is. Again, if you want to believe the media is like somehow he's perfect or something, like, no, come on. He's a politician, man. They all do it. Democrats, Republicans. He's no better. I like it down here. I think it has clearly. I mean, if you watched us and followed us for months, you knew we were buying it down here. We sold it up at the 200 week or 200 month. Now we're back at prices that make sense to buy. But guess what? It's a bear market. It might not bounce as much as you think. New core. Again, I really like this. I got stopped out. Hit the 20 day, backed off. It stopped me out on this day, which that happens. Didn't get back in, got into other stuff. Now today it's down while SMH is up. Again, SMH, we'll talk about it shortly. Has catalyst, 
This thing has headwinds. Now, again, I don't know if that any of that will be true. We don't know. But the perception is that's all that really matters. And then a lot of people will be like, whoa, 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 you're not a fundamental guy. I'm like, no, I'm not. But I also know that like the headlines might be out there that keep this scaring people. And maybe that is accumulation, but it might not go higher first. It might need a bounce, like retest. Same thing with Valet. I mean, we love it down here. We play the bounce. I just, I don't know. Again, we bought this with the W bottom. We sold it up here. We want to see why. Zoom out to the monthly. Oop, wife just dropped some stuff. It was like the top of the VAP range. Again, I didn't get out up in the low 20. I got at like 20, basically. Happy. Happy at 11. I think more like 12, because I, I was somewhere in like more on this 20-day backup. Scott, who's in the Discord room, was like screaming by on this and professional gap. It's like, oh, crap. But I didn't want to chase. And again, we talk about not chasing, right? Well, here's a classic example. It popped and pulled back 20-day, then it ripped. CCJ, again, uranium. The uranium folks are just, I mean, they don't think they can lose, which is crazy, because that's not how a bottom in the market plays out, right? Think about it. No one's holding hands and singing kumbaya at the bottom. The bottom is bloody murder. Everybody's scared. Run for the hills. That's not, again, same thing with gold. Everyone's like holding hands, trying to agree, like, this is the bottom. Let's all be friendly. No, the market's going to rip souls out of every bull at the low when you're really there. That's true capitulation. Same thing. Look at the volumes down here. It's just whatever. And again, the fundamentals, good luck. If fundamentals mattered, EXPI would be at $90 a share. It's not. It's at 14. Again, you can see this with many companies. Like, did the fundamentals matter for Tesla to get up to 1240? Nope. And when it probably trades at like a double digit, will it make sense then? Nope. It just doesn't. The fundamentals are trying to get everyone to agree on one thing, and that's just not the market. It doesn't work like that. Again, whoever's selling you this kind of crap is just, again, they're taking the other side of your trade. You don't realize that. Uh, what is it? Arrow? Like this one long term, but what do we say? Lay off of it. Copper name. I mean, everyone loves copper down here. Logically, it makes sense. I just don't want to buy it. Okay? Again, should hold here. What if it doesn't? I, again, at this point, I don't know what the catalyst is. If there's a bear market and lower rates, deflation, like, that's not going to be headline-driven good for materials. Now, if they bounce in that, you know, over those headlines, with those headlines, that, that shows you something's going on. Just be careful. Mosaic, we talked about dumping this. It stopped me out and then went a little lower. Remember, we were buying down in here, 45, and it bounced, it took it out and gone. Look at this action. This is, I mean, I would be so mad holding Mosaic versus some of the other names that are ripping. CF is acting a little better. I think you can see you have double bottom, but again, I just don't want to own these names. Let's get into the stuff that we do own. I don't own AMD indirectly, but I own it through the SMH. And again, I was the one here telling you short here, short here. Watch the levels. Now what? We are at monster support. Look at this. Again, support equals resistance. Look at this area here in the low 70s. And I am not surprised. You bounced. You think you're going higher. How high? I mean, again, probably up to at least 100. Maybe it could be a stronger bounce. I don't know. But again, how do you trade it? Well, again, if you bought it down here like we recommended, the more you're up, the less you own. You don't have to worry about being perfect about the top. Oh, but I missed all the move. Well, no, again, just be thankful you're making money in a bear market. There's people around here just screaming bloody murder, getting wiped out left and right, not knowing what's going on. SMH, what a killer trade. Again, start out on the monthly. Said, watch this old like trend line. I even, I mean, even at the 50% fib at 200, I was like, mm, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Here we go. We started getting in down here. Look, one more day, total reversal, professional gap. What do we say? Do not sell the first day of the professional gap. Well, look what it pulled back, bought. I mean, you could have traded this, and that's what we talked about. You could buy Ox Soxel today on the pullback, got back to 13, closed pretty good. Where did it close? Do I have it in here? I apologize. If I don't, I'm going to throw it on at the end. Because, again, I mean, you just have to think in your mind. If the trend is your friend, yeah, right near 19, or near 14, this is a great trade, a great ad, a great dip ad. That just is what it is. And so let's get back to the SMH. Again, the CHIPS Act, Congress, you know, that's what we talked about. Like this action felt so bull crap because if they're going to pass the CHIPS Act, they're all fighting Mitch McConnell saying, no, 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 no. It's literally like, hey, guys, let's all buy our stock at the lows and then we'll all agree together to buy it. And, uh, we'll all buy it at the lows. We'll all agree at some point that this is going to pass. The perception is 
semiconductors will benefit it rises and then who knows if it's a bear market continuation it's going to flop and if not it could chop and go sideways either way it was such an easy trade again we'll see uh apple uh, let me do meta i almost forgot meta the other day what do we think talked about head and shoulders here's your right shoulder we talked about the retest you could buy now it's over the 20 day and people are like oh it's dead money it's like well set your stop you don't know it could just it might be literally waiting for something need or it could back to channel low but what are the probabilities if we study probabilities and we keep our mind clear we don't focus on the news probability says channel low to channel high channel low to channel high channel low to channel high here you go channel low somewhat channel low somewhat it, channel low whatever there is upside there is probability based and keep everyone keeps going what's your guess i don't know 180s maybe 200 I mean, that's a big price gap or what you know potential but hey i don't care if i'm buying it at 155 160 range and again i'll take the points and again you can leverage these with the options because they move now people go oh why don't you play the gdx for moves 20 percent well, again i don't trust it. it doesn't have a catalyst it's not tech it's not deflation you know and also too I trade for points. I really, you know, I don't really trade for percentages if I'm going to trade options. I know that sounds crazy, but think about it. If I buy the 155 call, I hopefully can make 10 or 10 or 15 points. And I treat my in the money calls like shares. 500 shares moves 10 points. Do the math, five grand. Now, again, percentage wise, it, it's all relative. It's great. But again, I, I, I like to trade for points. Now, people will argue that all day. Well, you could have bought the GDX calls and it goes up 300%. And it's like, well, you paid $2 and you sold it for $5. It's still $3 a share. It's 150%, yes. Right? I think so, yeah. And that's still good, but still $3 a share. If you bought, you know, whether it's, if it's still 10 calls, it's still only $1.50. You get what I'm saying here? And sometimes, because I don't want to go and buy 100 calls on something. I just don't. I want some with liquidity. Meta has liquidity. SMH has liquidity. Apple. Again, we talked about this. It bottomed first, professional gap, chopped, making higher highs. How can you be short the market if Apple's rising? I I keep telling people that. Like that's why you follow it. You don't have to trade it. That's why you watch these recaps. This is not bearish action. It is not telling you the market's going lower because that's popping. Now again, it could pull back and go higher. Whatever. Just be aware that's not bearish accent. I just hate how people get run over. Roblox. Again, here we go. Here we, the stock we're buying. Talked about buying it down here. Talked about buying it here. Went higher, sold a little bit. Again, it feels like it's getting squeezed or it's going to get bought out. Raise your stops. We don't know. It's done great. I still think you can get into the 50s. So trade accordingly. Keep a core position. Manage it. It's not going to go up every day 15%. If it does, great. But it's again you're playing the probabilities i mean even today when it was up huge it's like oh pulled back could have sold some you could have managed the position whatever you want to do or if you say you don't want to do anything and you just say i'm going to set my stop at x profit then great but just you can't sit here and expect every day to be the same again the trend is our friend will we not agree some people say this is bearish some might say it's bullish i would say as long as you hold over the 100 day you're good really that simple Tesla, I know there's some news after hours about them dropping their Twitter deal. I said this for weeks now. Don't short it because look what it's doing. W bottom, chopping. You could probably buy the dips. Now how high it goes, I don't know. I don't even really want to predict it. I've said somewhere between eight and 900. I don't think it's going back to 1200, okay? And if you were a long-term bull, that is on you. It is not. However, it doesn't mean just short it because you're bearish. Like the market is clearly showing you evidence that it was going to go higher. It is now going higher. Do you want to step in front of the train? That is your choice. I'd prefer to go with it on pullbacks with stops, trade it accordingly, know the seasonality, know the sentiment, know the volume at price, know the volume action. It's it's telling you it's going higher. It's not going to go in straight line. You're going into OPEX. Think about the seasonality. Again, it's all the evidence that we talk about in every video. And if you don't watch every video, then you're sometimes I don't repeat it. I apologize. There's the evidence is the evidence. That's the people who benefit are the ones who watch the videos daily. Or again, just stick around the room. I mean, it's, it is what it is. You don't have to sit here and overthink this. EXPI, again, here's fundamentals. This company's killing it. I work for them. I mean, that's who I hang my license with. Look at the stock. If fundamentals matter, we'd be at 90. Now I know people say, oh, you guys hand out shares and yada, yada, yada. But it's at 14. We talked about you could buy it in 11, 12. Congrats. That's a nice move. UTHR, one of your 
like literally somebody who's on this at the bottom where we say double bottom volume price action look at this bullish went higher pulled back went higher right pulled back double bottom again zing where did it pull back all again do you see how we're able to see the structure of this and repeat and, and use it to our advantage now again i personally didn't trade any now i look back and go oh you're an idiot whatever again i know people own it and who were trading it and my goal is to help them out and hopefully they made a killing which i know they did and again pull back here now what am i saying the more you're up the less you own because this is a nice move to 14 to 240 is it going skyrocket i don't know i don't know so raise your stops and again the more it rises expect at some point for it to pull back and everyone's like wave theory it's got to go up to 250 or whatever you want to project it i don't know i don't know but when i look at the monthly oh look at that there's a trend there actually is a channel high. Oh my God. Let me draw it and share it to all the video, uh, all the other. This is why I love huge charts. I can duplicate it to all my charts and it's there. Hello. We'll see. Again, I, if it gets bought out, that upper channel bound doesn't matter. All right, let's end it with the oil names because again, it's getting real juicy. Probably want a short. It's doji, doji, doji day. Look at it on the USO. Uh, mm. Talked about it probably should bounce. Again, I still have lower prices on this. This is a crappy ETF. I've told people, like, look at this ETF. Here's oil in 2008 at 150 a barrel. Here is at, like, 120 a barrel. Look at it. Short this thing on pops. And if you have a good cost basis, again, be aware. I think oil goes lower in time. It's not going to go in a straight line. This is a very good avenue for shorting. You could buy puts on pops, sell them on drops. Now what? Um... Let's let's see how the channel plays out, right? Is it? I don't know. I'm just trying to play Connect Four here. Connect Four. I mean, you've got man, that's super super steep. I don't really like that. Whatever. Just play the zones. You you see the congestion here. You see the volume at price zone. It, it held. And again, and this more follows you futures and oil itself. But it's again, I hate to really chart. So much these ETFs, but the USO seems to be moving very well with oil currently. So trade it, know it, use it, but don't marry it. Like, you know what I mean? Think of it as a prop for which watching oil, because a lot of people don't have, can watch oil futures live, or if they are, it's TradingView, which is a platform that I don't really trust nor really appreciate at all. Their moderators suck ass. They kicked me off my board, created the volume price analysis board, and they literally booted me after we got up to the fifth following, largest following on there. Not cool of them. So I don't really advise them trading them because, again, they're about pushing. They want you to use all these fun little add-ons and pay for them. They're all worthless. They didn't like when I started saying that. Because, again, look how simple my chart's on. Volume, volume at price, trends, moving averages, Fibonacci's. Pretty simple. <laughs> Really that simple. Okay, going lower. XOP. Uh, people are like, you're crazy for shorting this. I mean, we literally started shorting here. I went out of town. Drip got murdered and added a little up here and then went, Poof. not surprised. Again, here you go. Everybody bullish at the highs. Fail. Now what? We talked about getting down to here. This is probably your first zone of support. Went even lower. Not surprised. Now what? I mean, if oil's popping, this is going to pop back. But just keep in mind. At a certain price point, this becomes an absolute short again. This stuff is not a mean. Keep in mind, this is a really crappy ETF again. Here's oil in 2008. Look where it's at. Not even close. You can short this thing. Remember, it did a one for one split during COVID. Now what? Mm. Not surprised. Big down red. We'll bounce back. Here you go. Could it bounce up to higher highs? I doubt it. Could it be a washout like that? You know, it's too early to tell. But I imagine there's probably going to be a wick. Here was a wick. <laughs> Not that was pretty crappy, I guess. Uh, that was when Trump was around. It's hard to know. Again, you you you, you just probability based. You think the trend's down, I wait for a bounce. If I catch that bounce, great. If I don't, again, I can't do everything all the time. Exxon Mobil, and then we'll end this. Hopefully, you're having a great week again. Like this is awesome, another awesome week. Some folks, I was waiting for this. Some folks short this 50 day. Great. Now it's bouncing because I hopefully they took some profits. Now what? There's your professional gap. Game over. Bounce. I don't know. This is like I said, you see how I, I talk about taking money off the more you're up because these counter moves happen. And if you're all in short and, and say you even have puts, like this is where it's really scary. As I tell you, like I am trading in and out of options frequently if I am trading them because again, 
you need the straight line moves but then as soon as things become obviously beneficial to the sense that i've made the most amount of money they seem very logical they could go further but also they've already gone further i start deleveraging because again what happens if you would have held those puts you went from 81 back up to 87 now you took six dollars off these puts and remember if you lever leverage puts like i do as like just owning shares you know a thousand shares 10 puts you just gave up six dollars do the math 600 bucks that would have sucked right no six dollars no that's six thousand dollars my bad see my point it's where you got to like take the money with options oh i bought september puts all right well then are you holding all the way out and just not going to watch them and hope that you're right that's all you really can do because you're going to see drawdowns on your options I mean, you better be in the money because if you buy the 80 puts <laughs> In this rally, those puts get murdered. If you bought the 100 puts, this rally doesn't hurt as bad in the sense that when it proceeds to continue, you're going to print money. Those 80 puts are going to have to get probably in the mid-70s before you even really start making money again. Get back to even. That's That sucks. Uh, ended on oil. Now, again, a lot of people argue about the finality and the certainty of options and what how you trade them. Again, it's all personality-based. Uh, PXD talked about this. You trade the channel high, short, got back below our support zone, but bounced right back into it. That doji was telling, chop. And they all look the same. They all hit our support zones, went a little lower, and now chopping in them. Here you go. Holding. Bang. Went much below it, but back over it. Again, just is what it is. Be careful. Bolero. They all look the same, guys. That's the thing about trading like the sectors matter like the individual names will follow the sector read the livermore book i recommend it talks about it they all follow the sector the leader who's the leader well if you don't know who the leader in a sector is then that's again got to figure that out or the leading etf who what's the biggest holding of that etf in that etf say it's the xle it's probably exxon mobile if i had to guess well exxon mobile and the xle are going to probably look very similar Hope this helps. Again, if you're newer to trading, not really the ideal place, but side rooms, people can help. If you are literally missing one thing or you know, you, you've you been trading for a while and there's just something that's not clicking, that's where I think we really can help. Because again, ultimately trading is what? It's your perception of the market. Let's go with the flow. I like to help people like, let's be like Bruce Lee, like flow like water. We don't, we're not married to our positions. We're not always bullish. We're not always bearish. We try to stay neutral. And the biggest determinant of your trading is, are you trading well? Did you follow your plan? Because again, bad luck happens, good luck, all that crap, you can't control that. But did you follow your plan? If you don't have a plan when you're trading and you're just winging it, again, I'm kind of winging it, but I know my plan in the sense that I can execute it. Like if I'm wrong, I'm gone. If it works, the more I'm up, I'm, I go. It's really simple. Again, I, Again, I know the charts. I stare at this stuff all day off and on. I know what's going on. Again, like for example, like TLT, people were like wondering, like, why did you get back in today? Well, again, it was the jobs number, right? I don't know going ahead of it. What have I said? The first mouse gets the trap, the second gets the cheese. Well, what if it had ripped up? Great. Awesome. I've got price action in here. We'll pull back even better. Added today. We'll see what happens. Do you see how like the plan is to sometimes just wait for the news? You don't know. Again, there's usually one thing you're doing wrong, and it's either overtrading like going too aggressively when you should be layering in because you don't have the information to confirm it, but you also are good prices, but you also don't know how to do stops. Again, my plans are really simple. I don't, I, that's why I try to get in near the lows, try to sell the more I'm up because I know the backdrafts happen. I mean, you could have seen this coming up here, right? This candle was pretty ominous, not surprised. Again, we talked about you could get in here yesterday, but I didn't waiting for the news. Again, the yesterday, that was hard. Look at this volume. It didn't really confirm the action. But what happened, again, you couldn't predict that with certainty until you had the jobs report. Remember, like as we talked about, trade the after, not before. Because, again, the before is where all the risk is. You can get totally murdered by trying to predict the action versus, hey, wait for the reaction and then go with it or trade it. Man, there's so much to trading. There's a lot of stuff in the side rooms. Again, if you are not in the Discord room, again, you don't have to come in here and chat and ask a bunch of stuff, but use the side rooms. Look at all this information, education reference articles, recommended reading, volume price analysis, Jeff a little more stuff. Back to basics videos, everything you need to know. Again, I try to create a video for it, and if I haven't, I will. I appreciate everybody. Have a great day, great weekend. Be safe. Again, just what do I say? Be smart, be logical, be thoughtful. 
Don't let your emotions control you. You control your reactions. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, the PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.